A drop-down list in Excel can be a great time saver because it keeps you from having to type in long repetitive information. It can also be used the way people standardize the input of that information. So using data validation, we could go to the region cell, hit the drop-down, and then just pick the region instead of having to type it. But what many people want to know how to do is how to create a dependent drop-down list. In other words, a drop-down list where if I were to pick Midwest, then the next drop-down list would only show me the entries for Midwest. And of course, if I were to pick Northeast, then the next one only shows me the Northeast entries. If I pick South, then we get the South entries. And if we pick West, then we only get entries from the West. Now I'm going to show you how to do this, but that's not what this video is about. Because there are dozens and dozens, maybe hundreds of videos and websites out there that show you how to create dependent drop-down lists. But I want to show you a situation that I ran into recently, where the situation called for something a little bit different that this technique couldn't solve. Be sure to click on the link in the video description so you can download this file, get access to all these notes, and be able to click on any of the cells or tools used in this video so you can see how things were done. So first let me show you how I created the dependent drop-down list. We start off with a list of regions, and we'll put these across the top in a table as headers. And as you can see here, I've named these four cells regions. So this way when I go to the first drop-down, and I go up to data validation, then the source of that list is the regions named range, which are the four words in the header. So the trick is to get this second list to point to another range based on that selected region. So going to the cell for the second list, we'll go up to data validation, and we'll use this function here called indirect. Indirect is a very unique function in Excel because it's a way of saying, hey, go look in this cell, but use whatever's there instead of this actual cell address. Normally when you point to a cell, you use the address, but in this case, I'm going to substitute it with what I see in that address. So indirect would say, don't go to C2 to get your list, go to C2 and they'll tell you where to go to get your list. So let me move this up here. So indirect says go to C2, but C2 says go get your stuff from Midwest. Well, in this case, I've created another named range called Midwest. So if I highlight these cells, you can see the name of this range is Midwest. So if indirect says go to C2, C2 says go to Midwest. If I were to pick Northeast, these cells here, you can see I've named them Northeast. If I go to South, these cells are named South. And then if I go to West, these cells are named West. So the indirect is just being rerouted to a different location. Now that is how every standard dependent drop-down list tutorial is going to teach you how to do this. But let's look at a very different situation. So the situation now is I have a primary drop-down for location and maybe I want to choose international or domestic. But when I make this choice, I wanted to alter the list of three dependent drop-downs. So this trick will be used when you have two or more dependent drop-downs going to the same first drop-down. So I've got the same kind of thing I had before where my headings are going across the top and I'll use this as the drop-down source for the first list. So if they choose international, we sell bikes, darts, and hammocks. But if they choose domestic, we sell go-karts, skateboards, or slides. So you can see here I've named this range international, I've named this range domestic. So when they choose, say, international or domestic from the first drop-down list, if we look at data validation, we see the source of this list is D2 through E2, the headers of the first table. The second drop-down, if we look at data validation, this one is using the indirect and it's pointing to cell A3, which is the user's choice from the first list. So if they choose international, we get bikes, darts, and hammocks. But if they choose domestic, we get go-karts, skateboards, and slides. Now the warehouse that this comes from, if you're purchasing something internationally, the shipping warehouse is either Paris, Bonn, or Sydney. But if you're shipping something domestically, then the warehouse is Chicago, Dallas, or Miami. So we can't point to international or domestic because we'll keep getting bike starts, hammocks, or go-kart skateboards and slides. So what we have to do is when we go into data validation for this second similarly dependent drop-down, we're going to use the same indirect function, but we're going to concatenate to that some sort of suffix. In this case, I'm going to use an underscore one. So where these two were named international and domestic, these two will be named international underscore one and domestic underscore one. So we're still taking the words domestic or international, but then in data validation, we're going to concatenate that underscore one. So now we'll end up going to either here, which is named international one, or here, which is named domestic one. So if I choose international, like before, bikes, darts, hammocks, 
but the warehouse, Paris Bond Sydney. If we were to choose domestic, then the products are go-kart skateboard slides and the warehouse, Chicago, Dallas, Miami. Since the carrier is also dependent on the location that the user picks, we want to be able to look at either international or domestic, but we don't want to go back to here or here. We want to go to this third list. So these two named ranges we'll call international underscore two and domestic underscore two. So this range right here, international underscore two, this range, domestic underscore two. Back at the carriers dropdown, if we look at data validation, we'll use the indirect function, but we'll concatenate whatever the user picked in A3, the initial dropdown, we'll concatenate that with an underscore two. So if they choose domestic, we get UPS, Averett, ODFL. If they choose international, then we get DHL, FedEx, UPS. So the user comes in from the primary dropdown, say picks international, then they're going to be limited to any list that starts with the word international. So in this case, international, international underscore one, and international underscore two. If they pick domestic, then they're limited to anything in the domestic lists. Domestic, domestic underscore one, domestic underscore two. So we're still using the indirect trick, but the concatenation of that suffix is what allows us to look at different lists. If we go up and take a look at the name box dropdown, we can see the three domestic lists, and the three international lists. So for that simple scenario where you have a primary list and a secondary list, using the indirect function to just point to the primary list and have a named range reroute you is all that you need. But if you do run into a scenario where you need to have a primary dropdown list control multiple secondary dropdown lists, that's when you're going to have to create these modified named ranges. And then in the data validation section, Use the same indirect trick, but concatenate that suffix. Don't forget to download this file from the link provided in the video description, so that way you can get access to all of the notes, screenshots, and you can click on any cell to go into the details and reverse engineer what I've done. Thank you for watching, and remember at BCTI, the learning never stops.